Okay, so in this video we will be trying to uh, repair or fix a P5E3 premium motherboard that uh, got a corrupted BIOS quite recently. So I was messing around with the uh, BIOS files a little bit and now I managed to uh, get the motherboard in a corrupted state. So when I try to turn on the system it always goes to the uh, uh, BIOS recovery thingy. So uh, it says the BIOS is corrupted, it tries to load a CD or a floppy disk or similar. But when I have the correct uh, BIOS file, it, let's say in a USB stick or in a DVD, it uh, tries to load it. Sometimes it recognizes the uh, target device like USB stick or a disk, but then it hangs, so it doesn't work. So uh, in order to uh, repair this, I will be using a very common or a very popular external BIOS flashing utility. This is the uh, CH341A. So this is a, a very common device you can get from uh, eBay from China. Usually it costs around 10 euros with the uh, SOIC 8 test clips. So uh, the 8 stands for 8 pin BIOS chips. So uh, as the BIOS chip of this particular motherboard model is not a removable one, we need to use these test clips to flash the BIOS or to read the BIOS file itself from the BIOS chip. So uh, there are usually there are 8 or 16 pin BIOS chips. The most common are 8 pin. So uh, usually you just need these. I, I think I haven't seen that many uh, BIOS chips with 16 pins, but, th but there are some, on, especially on some very old graphics cards and some very old motherboards. But yeah, so uh, as to connect this, you need to uh, plug in this little external uh, or add-on chip or a PCB over here, and uh, you need to connect the test clips the correct way around. I think this pink wire over here, that's sh that should stand for uh, pin 1. So uh, the, uh, this particular pin over here or pad is labeled as 1, so we need to connect the uh, header this way around. And then we need to plug the test clips the correct way around on the motherboard as well. So the pink or red wire over here should stand for pin 1. And the pin 1 on the BIOS chips is always marked with a little like round ball. So uh, in this case we would have to connect the uh, test clips this way around as the uh, pin 1 is uh, uh, this way around over here. So I already went through how you do this. So I think you need at least a 24 pin power and you need to turn on the power supply. We need a separate PC next to the system so I will be using I will be using a laptop next to the motherboard to do the whole thing. So let's see how this goes. So uh, plug in the whole thing. It should light, I think it should light red when it's doing its thing. Not sure if the uh, wireless mouse receiver is limiting, so I'll, do, I'll use the uh, laptop's mouse to do the thing. So then we need to turn on or turn the motherboard so that we can access the BIOS chip itself. So let me show you, I'll try to show it on the camera. So the BIOS chip is this one over here, it's next to an SPI header over here and the pin 1 is on this corner over here. So uh, that's how we need to uh, connect the test clip. It's a little bit hard I think, I might have to do it off camera. Yeah, I might have to do it off camera to get some uh, clearance in front of the motherboard, so sorry. Okay, and a while later. So this is definitely much harder than I thought. It's very hard to get the uh, test clips attached properly. So they easily like flip up and they don't hold in place. And uh, on this board it's actually quite tough because there, is, there are the uh, SPI uh, header pins that block you from putting the uh, test clip in place. So I actually have to bend them a little bit. And uh, 
the USB port itself can actually vary a lot. So now I'm actually using another very old laptop. I still didn't get it to work. It get it gives me some uh, error pop up. So uh, it's not recognizing the uh, chip correctly. And I actually uh, damaged the motherboard a little bit. So uh, when I was putting when I was putting the test clips in place, you can see that small like resistor at the center of the screen right now. It got uh, removed. I have it. Uh, I found it, and I have it uh, on a piece of uh, tape at the moment. So I will try to do this first, and then I will uh, solder the uh, small resistor back in place. But it's very hard to get the uh, uh, test clips attached properly. And on the device itself, you need to use. So now, now it got lost again. So you need to use this uh, first bank of uh, the holes that are closer to the to this chip over here. The this bank over here is for 25 series uh, BIOS chips, and uh, the pin number one goes over here. So the red wire again is the pin number one. So the uh, second bank of uh, holes is for 24 series of BIOS chips. So uh, you need to move. You, you need to have the. Uh, you need to have everything the correct way around, or it will not work. So I will keep trying, and this one should be the correct uh, way for the uh, jumper, or the correct spot for this jumper, if you are using a computer. So I will keep trying, and I'll see. But it's. I think it has to be on the test clips themselves. That why it's not working at the moment. So I'll keep trying, and let's see. Okay, finally. So uh, actually, on this buffer board, it looks like I don't need passive power from the power supply. So uh, the 24-pin and the 8-pin power connectors have been plugged in. CPU has been removed, just in case if it turns on, and power supply is not turned on. We don't have the green light over here. I actually uh, put the test clip the other way around. I think the contact is now good, and also the uh, little uh, add-on. PCB has been turned the other way around. But now we actually have, when we press the question mark button over there at the center, we get a list of the chips. So the correct chip on the P5E3 Premium is SST25VF016B. Uh, so uh, it's a 25 series chip. So, okay, close. And now if we read, we get now we get actually a green light on the device, so it's reading correctly. We should have something else than a, a full list of FF codes. If you only get FFs, the reading process wasn't successful. So now we actually have some data. So this looks like we uh, could do it correctly. So it was able to read it. So. Uh, Okay, so you can use the read function if you want to save the file from the BIOS chip itself. So now if we want to flash the working BIOS, we press the browser thingy, we select the BIOS file, so 0803. So now it's selected, so see users, my name, blah blah blah, and then we will click program IC unprotect erase program verify. IC will be raised and programmed. Continue. So, erasing memory. But yeah, this is a very delicate process, so take your time. Be very careful. Be very careful with the test clip. So now it's programming memory, verifying. So I will let this to continue and I will then check how it looks like once that green bar has finished. And then I will have to resolder the resistor back in place so that we can actually turn on this board. So yeah. Okay, so this definitely requires a lot of trial and error. So uh, I really had to uh, attach the test clips countless amount of times on the uh, BIOS chip. But uh, so far when trying, it actually seems that this particular uh, program is better for the flashing process. So the Neo Programmer 2.1.0.19 instead of the AS Programmer. It has a very nice layout to help you uh, put the uh, connector the correct way around. So you can see 
pin number one is labeled. So th with this I could actually uh, flash the BAUS file completely to the BAUS chip. The AS programmer always gave me some weird errors at the end. So now when I read the BAUS chip I can do it again. So uh, read IC. So sometimes on the uh, sometimes on the AS programmer I had very weird information on the right right side of the uh, neo uh, of the program window, but on the neo programmer now we have correct information and so on. So no full list of FF codes. So we have Asus Tech and so on. I think we have, we we might have. Well, doesn't matter. I think it should work. So now I will. Uh, uh, disassemble everything and I will uh, get on with the uh, soldering of the resistor and then we can actually try to turn on the motherboard. We, I think we can do it on this table and see if it posts. Okay, so the small resistor that got loose was this small one over here. I now resoldered it back in place. So uh, that kind of happens when uh, you try to grab the BAUS chip with the uh, test clip. I also uh, bent the SPI header pins back to their correct position. So now let's uh, set up this whole thing very briefly. Like let's install a graphics card, one stick of memory and put some kind of very simple cooling solution on the CPU and see if it posts. And now the moment of truth. I just set up the motherboard on a very simple uh, Dimas Tech bench table. I plugged in the 24 pin plus the 8 pin power connectors. A very uh, simple uh, 6500 GD graphics card, one stick of Kingston HyperX memory, a very simple uh, 1366 CPU water block on the CPU, and the PS2 keyboard at the rear I.O. So let's try to turn on the system and let's see if it posts. So over here. So now it turned on, based on the power supply fan. And now let's see. What happens? And boom! It worked! Baos Revision 0803 E8600 CPU. So let's press F1. Let's check system information. So we have uh, all of the correct things over here. And let's go to hardware monitor. Just to see the temperatures. So 46 degrees on the CPU, voltages seem good and so on. So yeah, definitely an awesome thing that, it, that I got it recovered. So let's turn off the system. So yeah, so if you think this video was helpful, then uh, definitely use these tips or use this video as a guide. Definitely obtain the uh, CH341A external flashing tool if you have any use for it. It doesn't really cost anything at all on eBay. Of course, I will provide all of the uh, links down in the description box of this video so you can obtain the tool if you have any use for it and all links for, for the required software to do this whole thing. So definitely try the Neo programmer instead of the uh, AS flashing tool. I had so much better success with the uh, Neo programmer instead of the uh, AS programmer or how's it, how's it called. So uh, definitely try it and I'm sure you should be good to go. But yeah, so uh, if you like this video, if you really think this was helpful, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.